it is a pleasure to meet you. This is the first 2020 Gyeonggi International Hydrogen Forum. My name is Koo young -sil. I am your uh, MC. I'm with the Gyeonggi Provincial Government. We are now moving into our last session. I would like to ask you for your continued participation until the end, and would I like to move to the next last session. This session is on Gyeonggi Do's energy transition. It's a special session. In this special session, we have eight experts who are going to be with us to talk about Kyungkido's Green New Deal energy implementation measures. Before we begin, I would like to introduce our uh, speakers to you. First of all, we have our moderator, Ko Tae Kyung, at Kyungki Research Institute. He's a senior uh, research fellow there. Next, we have a presenter, Hong Hyun Pyo, Renewable Energy Team Manager at Kyungki Province. Pek Hyun Suk, Energy Policy Division Chief on Ansan City Environments and Transportation Bureau. Kim Lee Gyeong, Gyeonggi Regional Headquarters Industry Division, uh, Korea Energy Management. Shin Ho Chal, Director at Gyeonggi Energy Center. Lee Kyu Jin, a Research Professor at Aju University. Ham Il Han, a CEO at H Energy Co. And lastly, Lee Chang Su, Chairman of the Gyeonggi-do Citizen Development Cooperatives Council. Thank you very much. This session is being broadcast real, real time, and we do have an online audience with us today. We now <laughs> like to hand over the microphone to Ko Tae-gyeon, the moderator of the discussion. Yes, please. Hello. I welcome you to this special session, the last session on the 2020 Gyeonggi International Hydrogen Forum. My name is Ko Tae Kyung at the Gyeonggi Research Institute. We are here to talk about energy transition, Gyeonggi Do's new deal. Because of COVID-19 and climate crisis, this is a very hot topic at the moment. We have about an hour given to us. It's not enough for us to have a very full discussion, but with the energy transition for Gyeonggi-do, we did have the opportunity to invite many uh, experts with us today. So with efficient uh, discussion, I think we can have a very good outcome here. Let me uh, brief you on the order today. So first of all, we'd like to hear from Gyeonggi-do's uh, plan on energy transition. We would first hear the presentation and then have a free discussion. So now I'd like to ask Hong Hyun pyo of Gyeonggi Province for the presentation. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ko. I am Hong Hyun Pyo, Renewable Energy Team Manager of Gyeonggi Province, and I will deliver a presentation in this special um, session on Gyeonggi Province. I would like to talk about the plan for energy transition of Gyeonggi Province in response to climate crisis. And if you take a look at, at the table of contents, you will uh, see uh, the relevant uh, the agenda, such as uh, the background behind the energy transition here in Gyeonggi Province, mm -hmm. and the current uh, the status of the greenhouse gas emission and the energy, as well as vision for uh, the energy transition. As you can see, uh, there is a dramatic change in terms of, of the climate of the entire Earth. There was a one and degrees Celsius uh, increase of the, the average temperature of the Earth. And if you take a look at the average temperature of the Korean Peninsula, there was an increase of 1.2 degrees Celsius and 2.3 degrees Celsius for Gyeonggi province. This, uh, these figures speak for themselves and telling us how serious the climate change issue is. In the midst of COVID-19, uh, we it came to uh, realize uh, that uh, the pandemic also occurred uh, due to uh, or in the wake of uh, climate change and also uh, the economic recession caused by the pandemic. There was a huge loss of jobs uh, and also uh, the advanced countries in the Western world are making preparations for economic recovery, focusing on a climate aspect. Particularly, they just set the goals for the low uh, carbon econo uh, economy transition and also the carbon neutrality. And also, the EU uh, considers the introduction of carbon border adjustment mechanism. And also declared the carbon neutrality policy. 
Here in Korea, President Moon also announced the net zero policy of the Korean government uh, as a part of Korean version of New Deal policy. And also, Gyeonggi province came up with its own New Deal policy uh, back in, in July this year. And the Gyeonggi governor, Lee Zemyeong, also declared the joining of PPECA uh, this year. Um, here, uh, you can see the greenhouse uh, gas uh, emission in Gyeonggi province uh, takes up 19.2% of the uh, nationwide, uh, the greenhouse gas emission, and it's increasing by 3.4% annually. And the 9% of the greenhouse gas emission uh, comes from the industry building and the transportation sector. And when it comes to energy supply and demand, there is a trend of increase in terms of uh, the LNG and the renewable uh, energy sources. And here uh, you can see uh, the 12.5% of the renewable energy is utilized uh, here in Gyeonggi province. And it's increasing by 1.9% annually. And when it comes to the vision of the energy transition of Gyeonggi province, the vision is a transition into low carbon energy system, uh, achieving and the self-supporting system of the energy. And it has a target of uh, a reduction of greenhouse gas emission uh, by uh, 1.05 million on TOE. And when it comes to the detailed strategies, uh, we've set uh, the strategy uh, to create uh, the energy cooperative ecosystem. When it comes to the PV power plant uh, uh, or the power generation, expertise is required. So energy prosumer training or the energy cooperative can be a good measures to deploy to increase its expertise, particularly in the area of monitoring and after sales uh, management service. Uh, this cooperative uh, actually system will create uh, the post management system in Gyeonggi province. And the second strategy to realize uh, the vision of energy transition in Gyeonggi province is to develop new businesses and new industries in the energy sector, particularly in the form of conversed uh, the businesses. High efficiency, the businesses in terms of energy consumption will be further developed. And third strategy that will be deployed by Gyeonggi province is to expand the people participating um, profit sharing energy production method using and uh, the parking spaces or the rooftops so these idle lens or the sites can be utilized for uh, the generation of electricity participated by uh, the people of Gyeonggi province and the profits from this power generation can be shared by uh, uh, the people Next, uh, we would like to move on to our main tasks. In Ansan, we have a, a hydrogen test city and Pyeongtaek extraction facility and a demonstration of our technologies. We are supporting these different developments. We also have a project to provide self-sufficient power to about 100,000 households to provide PV energy to them for energy self-sufficiency. We have a Gyeonggi-do style residential PV supply. Of the residences in Gyeonggi-do, about 68% are public housing for them in the verandas or in the rooftops. We can have a PV panels to try to have power power generators for each household to try to provide a distributed energy. Next, I'd like to talk about the different energy uh, welfare services efficiency on trying to create an energy self-sufficient village. On um, those areas where there are blind spots of energy supply, we can uh, provide uh, PV installations and establish your PV to try to cut down on electricity bill and support uh, the cost of heating and cooling. Next, because of uh, global warming and climate change, 
This has impacted the vulnerable uh, members of our society, so we want to provide support to uh, the vulnerable classes, low-income families, uh, specifically a single-person elderly uh, households, and this will be a way for us to try to realize energy welfare. And lastly, for smart energy apartments, for apartments, they are buildings that have very high levels of uh, energy consumption. So for those areas that are very low efficient, we can enhance them or also to try to provide more environmentally friendly energy or renewable energy to them to try to cut down on energy costs. With KEPCO, we will work on a power tariff uh, contract or co power tariff uh, billing structure to try to make this more optimal. There are about 25 different tasks in seven different categories. For three years, we're going to uh, invest about 909.2 billion won. Through so this, we can expand distributed energy and expand a private sector investment to try to shift over to a clean energy uh, transition, clean energy paradigm, which will lower our greenhouse gas emissions, create jobs, and also come up with a growth engine for the economy. This concludes uh, my presentation on uh, energy transition plan for Gyeonggi-do province. Oh, thank you very much, Hong Hyun Pyo, for your uh, presentation. That was uh, helpful for us to learn more about the consumption and use of uh, energy in Gyeonggi-do province, uh, fossil fuels, and also your key targets going forward. It was a very short presentation, but you were able to do it in a very concentrated manner. The moderator, the MC, already introduced our panelists. But we do have representation from academia, from the industry, and uh, from the government, from public sector, many different fields. I'm going to go in order. I'm going to ask, starting from the person sitting next to me, to tell you about the things that you're doing right now. And I think because of COVID-19 and climate change, people have new perspectives on Green New Deal. This is a very key a uh, challenge, a key mission. Can you maybe briefly tell us about your thoughts on that? Maybe about two minutes. Ms. Pek hyun -suk. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Pek hyun -suk, Energy Policy Division Chief of Ansan City Environment and Transportation Bureau. It's a great honor uh, to have a chance to participate in today's uh, special session discussion uh, along with uh, experts in this area on behalf of, of the city of Ansan. And we have um, implemented uh, the energy actually saving and the efficiency improvement project uh, since 2016. And also, we uh, have uh, engaged in various projects uh, to increase the proportion of renewable energy in the total energy consumption of the city. We are in the midst of COVID-19, and I believe that the fundamental cause of uh, the pandemic is the climate change. And the fundamental and effective solution to uh, the climate change is uh, a shift to low carbon uh, system, uh, the energy system. In this context, uh, the Korean government has come up with a Green New Deal policy and uh, the relevant uh, local autonomy, autonomous bodies and the governments come up with uh, their own um, Green New Deal policies as well. And the city of Ansan also um, has announced and pursued Ansan style Green New Deal projects. Yes, Kim Next, we'd like to hear from Kim Uigyeong. Yes, hello, it is a pleasure to meet you. I am Kim Uigyeong of the Korea Energy Management and the Gyeonggi Regional Headquarters Industry Division. We provide uh, work on energy efficiency and lowering of emissions of greenhouse gases in residential building and industrial energy use. And we are working to uh, transition to hydrogen e energy uh, paradigm. The local government and federal government's energy policies are being streamlined by us. So we work to coordinate those policies. We provide very strong support for local government's energy policies. Recently, we've seen a decentralization of energy 
which means that local governments are working on various different uh, decentralized energy policies, which we are also providing support for. The Green New Deal can allow for energy transition and uh, economic growth. So it's a very good opportunity for us to try to get both of them at once. We are uh, faced with this new COVID-19 era. We can be more realistic in our evaluation of the Green New Deal so that we can come up with a Green New Deal that is uh, more relevant to the local government uh, different needs so that we can have economic and environmental and uh, health uh, benefits, which would take uh, Korea to the next level. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Shin Ho Chul, Director of Gyeonggi Energy Center. Gyeonggi Energy Center uh, was launched by Gyeonggi Provincial Government, which is uh, the first of uh, such case. And, um, actually, the purpose of the uh, establishment of this Gyeonggi Energy Center is to establish uh, 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 the foundation for the achievement of, of Energy Vision 2030, as well as uh, the dissemination of and implementation of Energy Vision of, of the government. Energy is like the air, so we do not realize the importance of energy in um, the ordinary times. However, if something happens, then we realize how critical the energy is. In Europe, uh, this energy issue is dealt at uh, the national level as a part of the national security. I believe that the Korea uh, needs to follow suit and deal with this energy issue uh, as a part of the national security. Uh, the international community uh, will enter into new climate regime in the midst of a climate change and energy crisis. And the international community requires fundamental paradigm shift of, of the energy system. And the Korea is not an exception uh, to uh, this uh, trend. Uh, we all know that the climate crisis is being aggravated and uh, a lot of uh, the natural disasters happen and also the number of epidemics uh, uh, increases. So in the midst of uh, the various uh, uh, crises and issues, we need to think about how uh, we can come up with a relevant solution to overcome those crises. As it was rightly pointed out, uh, the co COVID-19 is the outcome of environmental destruction and the climate change. I think uh, the era of uh, economic development has uh, uh, gone and um, we are living in the era of uh, recovery uh, of our environment. So we need to make a paradigm shift from fossil fuel, uh, the based uh, centralized energy system to distribute it and the renewable energy based energy system. Even though it is belated, but still uh, this uh, energy a paradigm shift will be a relevant solution to overcome the economic crisis as well as a climate uh, crisis. We need to think about our future, and this kind of paradigm shift is not an option, but a must. And the Gyeonggi Energy Center will do its utmost to support this energy transition. Thank you. The Ajuda. Yes, I'm at Aju uh, University. My name is Ali Kyujin. I look at uh, ways to decrease the greenhouse gas emissions in transportation. So I look at inventory based uh, solutions to try to uh, look at the transportation side, and that is the focus of my uh, research. We've just heard of this uh, presentation by Mr. Hong. And I think that some of the key areas did not include transportation. So this means that I have to work harder to have that area included in that. You asked about uh, COVID-19 and the Green New Deal. How is it going to be highlighted going forward? I think in transportation, the most important areas where we can lower greenhouse gas emissions is public transport. Uh, because of COVID-19, many people feel that uh, going on public transportation is dangerous and uh, people are using their own private commercial vehicles or own cars or own uh, passenger cars. And so this means that uh, from 
public transporter, transport operators, their costs have gone up. And this makes it even more convenient for the users to use it. And so this is a sort of a vicious cycle because of COVID-19, especially in the field of uh, transportation. This means that uh, we have worked really hard to facilitate pu uh, public transportation, and it feels like all of that have been for nothing. Uh, I think that uh, for COVID-19, we don't feel that COVID-19 is going to end soon, so we have to come up with a new kind of a frame in seeing this. We've tried to reduce uh, the use of uh, passenger cars, but I think that there's going to be some limitations to that going forward. So perhaps instead of using passenger cars that are mid to large size, maybe they can use smaller lightweight vehicles and how we can see fuel transition. So smaller cars and fuel transition to try to use more eco-friendly uh, fleets. And also for public transportation, I think the biggest cost factor there is uh, transport cost, so fuel. But to uh, minimize uh, fuel is a way for us to try to increase uh, energy efficiency of electricity and hydrogen, and that will be very helpful to uh, make this kind of uh, public transport more uh, widely popularized. I think what's really important is that because of COVID-19, we've seen that uh, a lot of these uh, virtual activities are going to be here to stay. And that means that for logistics and the parcel delivery services, we're going to see them grow more. In transportation energy, uh, we have not really looked at uh, logistics delivery vehicles. So maybe going forward in transportation, we'll look at passenger cars and also logistics delivery vehicles. And that is where we have to come up with different uh, policy uh, measures for. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Ham Ilhan, CEO of H Energy Co. Um, my company is a platform startup um, which is working on the virtual power plant uh, platform. Um, actually, we have a multilateral platform strategy, including the shield, uh, uh, rooftop, and electricity O2O based B2C energy market. And the uh, local or regional uh, micro businesses and the small businesses can participate in this electricity market or kind of the power market uh, using this platform. The term New Deal reminds us of. Uh, the words like a Great Depression, public budget, a large or giant infrastructure project, like a fixed formula. However, the current time is uh, uh, dramatically different from the Great Depression time. And the, we are living in the era of fourth industrial revolution, and the characteristics of the fourth industrial revolution include uh, decentralization, decapitalization, and the shared economy. So what I want to tell you is that actually we need to pursue the green process new deal and the past methodology that were used in the Great Depression um, era cannot or will not work in our time. And rather, if the such kind of past methodology is utilized, the outcome will be disastrous. Thank you. Uh, yes, hello. Uh, my name is uh, Lee Chang Su. I'm the uh, chairman of the Gyeonggi-do Citizen Development Cooperatives Council. Uh, our cooperative wants to transition away from fossil fuel-based uh, fuels, uh, so LNG or nuclear fuel, and we want to go more towards renewable energy like sunlight or wind. And the cooperatives are funded by the citizens where we generate the power and sell that to KEPCO and receive dividends from that. There is an alliance of uh, cooperatives and 57 cooperatives like ourselves as part of that alliance. There are 23 in Gyeonggi-do province. About 40% are based right here in our province. However, in the uh, Gyeonggi-do Energy Vision goal, uh, they have announced that they want to create 100 cooperatives. So instead of just saying that let's in increase quantity and have as many citizens participate, instead of that, Having a citizen so participate in a renewable energy generation and try to get dividends, uh, perhaps that it could be explored from the approach of cooperatives, that the people can come together with uh, cooperatives. When citizens want to invest in renewable energy and participate, the uh, citizens who live in the urban spaces, they don't really know exactly where to install the PV panels, so they 
build or, or they borrow or rent uh, public spaces and they engage in uh, education and PR and uh, you know, uh, engage in energy generation from that and uh, sell that. And another thing is that they feel that they are working together to combat climate change. Cooperatives are very transparent, democratic, and autonomous, which is why we engage in also a lot of uh, public interest projects. So we pro provide support to our low income families. And we also, the citizens themselves, engage in a lot of these uh, public interest uh, projects, which is what the government should do. And there are many other projects that we do, but right now the government and uh, Gyeonggi local government really. Uh, tries to facilitate citizen engagement, but there have been some challenges to do so. We talk about Green New Deal, but this Green New Deal, I think rather than jobs, income is uh, more important. Right now, we are trying to produce clean energy and sell that and create a uh, income. And when hundreds of uh, citizens do that together, then that could create uh, this uh, Green New Deal in terms of uh, providing them with more income. A lot of uh, low-income families, very vulnerable families, have been impacted by COVID-19. And I think that COVID-19 is a climate crisis, which I think that many people would also say the same. So, And this uh, green energy crisis, a uh, green this the climate crisis is going to impact the most vulnerable members of our population because we are actually thinking about human extinction. So this is a very severe challenge. Uh, the Green New Deal is not something that should be uh, looked at from the point of view of income, but it's something that we have to do to try to prevent mass human extinction because uh, humanity could be wiped out as a whole, which is why we are combating against this together with other cooperatives. So going forward, I uh, hope uh, that we are going to stay committed to this cause and in Kyungi Green New Deal, uh, I would like to hear more about uh, your thoughts and I would like to share mine as well. Oh, thank you very much. The key words uh, mentioned by our panelists are kind of uh, citizens' participation, paradigm shift, the cooperation between the central government and the local government, and the industrial uh, innovation and ecosystem creation are uh, uh, two other uh, uh, keywords uh, that were mentioned. So the COVID-19 pandemic brought a drastic change to our overall society, and we need to think about all those keywords as a kind of solution to overcome the current crisis. Now I'd like to ask the strategies uh, to implement uh, the Green New Deal of Gangi province and its uh, planned energy transition and what kind of um, the tasks uh, uh, that they want to propose. So we all know that uh, this energy transition or the energy policy is uh, the area where uh, the citizens take great interest in because uh, actually the energy sector is closely related to their uh, daily lives, including the micro fine dust issue. And also this environment the sector should go hand in hand uh, with the transportation policy sector. So. Uh, I believe uh, that there are critical tasks ahead of Gyeonggi province in terms of a transportation system transition. So I have me I've already mentioned that in terms of the transportation, we've tried to do a lot of efforts even before this, uh, try to lower uh, greenhouse gas emissions. So this is nothing new. I think it was 2009 when this first came out and the Sustainable Act, the Sustainable Energy Act, where they legislated different processes to try to lower uh, greenhouse gas emissions. And at the time, uh, the goal was to decrease greenhouse gas emissions from transportation sector by 34.6%. And then in 2014, it said that by 2030, that it will decrease uh, emissions by about 24%. Recently, Gyeonggi province and the uh, central government are come to come, trying to come up with net zero policies and net zero measures. There have been a lot of uh, plans in the past, but there were some obstacles, uh, specifically implementation. And so I think that uh, the implementation and commitment, they all have to be together uh, along with uh, legislation, but these uh, laws and regulations have not been completely refurbished, which is why some of the efforts have not been completely uh, implemented. So what I want to talk about today is that if we look at these different plans, the transportation plans, and also this uh, regarding greenhouse gas emissions, we are uh, seeing a lot of uh, focus on EVs and HCEVs, but 
We have to see whether that's going to be enough. Uh, I want to look at the uh, sustainable efficiency, uh, the effects, long-term effects, and whether these uh, policies are fair and balanced. So I would just like to provide three points uh, for all of us to consider. The first is that from the point of view of uh, preference, Greenhouse gas emissions, I think that uh, we're seeing a lot of uh, use coming out of uh, public transportation. In Gyeonggi-do, when we look at public transport, there's mid to long term and short term, short distance, mid to long term, dis mid to long distance. For mid to long distance, there's a lot of CNG buses and uh, town buses that use LPG or other e eco-friendly energy, and that should have been the framework, but Gyeonggi-do's uh, share of a public transport was largely based on diesel. And now that we are talking a lot about hydrogen, Gyeonggi-do did not even uh, transition to CNG and LNG buses. I don't know if uh, Gyeonggi-do can leap over that and go straight to hydrogen. So we have to look at the laws and regulations because when we uh, talk about this uh, gas uh, filling stations, a lot of those uh, stations cannot really exist together in the urban scape. So this uh, hydrogen gas refueling stations, how can they be exist together with the city when uh, they are not going to, when there are so many people living to here together? Well, with these regulations, I think that with the regulatory sandbox has led to a lot of different uh, tests and pilot projects. And within that uh, legal and regulatory framework, I think that we can see more of an expansion. Maybe we can look at public uh, infrastructure. Instead of just uh, focusing more on uh, deployment of e eco-friendly cars, there needs to be a good conditions or environment to enable that. Secondly, Uh, greenhouse gas emissions has not gone down in transportation. In fact, we have gone up uh, compared to BAU. So if we look at the inventory in the middle, the biggest uh, contribution there was because of the number of registered vehicles per person has continued to gone up. This is natural to be expected because the economy has also grown, but the per person vehicle registration has really exploded and we have to look at that because of all of these uh, eco-friendly car subsidies. Uh, even if you get a second car, you can be eligible for those subsidies. So even for these uh, eco-friendly car deployment, the subsidies should try to limit uh, more cars coming into the fleet, that uh, subsidies and other incentives should really be careful about that. And secondly, if we look at the inventory, one of the big issues is that for a big to a large size vehicles, their share has gone up. In 2009, or I think 2007, when there was a point in time when these vehicles have gone down in size, but when the policies uh, were changed, then we have not been talking a little bit about the uh, lightweight cars. And so we have seen an increase in uh, bigger vehicles since then. And we're seeing the same thing with greenhouse gas emissions. With uh, mid to large size of vehicles, they have increased, which is why the uh, emissions of greenhouse gases have not gone down as much as we want. So here, we have to try to uh, look at fuel transition with these uh, cars and transportation. And the subsidy should not just be given to everyone, but maybe, as mentioned recently, the government should not subsidize everything, but for luxury vehicles, the, the subsidy should be cut more. Uh, maybe these uh, subsidies should be expanded more for uh, average priced uh, vehicles. And that is something that Gyeonggi-do should also look at. So you can subsidize more smaller lightweight cars together with the Green New Deal. So that could be another uh, aspect for you to consider. The third thing that I want to talk about is that with the Green New Deal, we're not just talking about fuel transition. Uh, we really want to uh, place economic growth at the core because when we talk about transportation, transportation is a very good pillar for economic growth. Uh, transportation is not itself an activity. It's something that goes together with economic growth. And to do so, we, we cannot just have many cars. That does not necessarily lead to economic growth. We need to have more passenger foot traffic so that the pedestrian foot traffic so that they can lead to more commercial activity. So we have to be mindful of uh, pedestrians as well. And so they have to look at this and see how the pedestrians, the foot traffic is moving, and we have to look at that together with uh, transportation. There is a 
policy on mass or mobility as a service. With the public transport, I think one of the most innovative ways is to try to cut down on transfers, bus and public transport uh, transfers, and that will cut down on the price. But we should also marry that now with the pedestrian foot traffic, because if we can have a more uh, incentivized foot traffic, then that will lead to more commercial activity. And so if you really want to have economic growth through the Green New Deal, you should not just look at cars, transportation, but also foot traffic and maybe use of bicycles as well. So these should also be looked at together to try to allow for more economic activity in the commercial districts. And if I can just add one more thing, the uh, logistics. Uh, delivery cars. I think that we have not seen a lot of uh, development there because of the conflict of interest. If we were to bring that to the public space, and then we should be able to look at these uh, logistics cars, um, these delivery motorcycles, motorbikes. Uh, if there is a safety issue there because they are not being very much regulated. So from the government's point of view, we have to try to bring that into the regulatory frame so that we can have eco-friendly and safe uh, logistics and a parcel delivery of services. So that is something that we have to do. With that, I would like to conclude. Thank you very much. Uh, actually, uh, Professor Lee came up with a lot of um, the efficient and effective proposals, particularly uh, actually the transportation policy focusing on transition into eco-friendly types of vehicles. Uh, um, actually, we need to uh, change or the shift uh, the focus of the policy into the revitalization of the regional economy, including a small alley if commercial district. Uh, now I'd like to ask this question to uh, Mr. Ham Iran, CEO of HEA Energy Coal. It seems uh, that, that the business actors uh, have made a lot of efforts to create a new business models based on the renewable energy and the new source of energy. but. There are certain limitations to the growth and the development of new business models based on the renewable energy sources. Uh, there are certain changes made recently in these areas. And as we all know, uh, Gyeonggi province has a great potential for the development of uh, this new business models based on the renewable energy. So could you please explain uh, what kind of potentials there are in terms of business models? Uh, my company pursues O2O services, and actually this O2O business has a lot of conflicts with existing laws and regulations. Uh, everybody it talks about the energy transition and Green New Deal, but actually the ownership and the distribution mechanism of uh, this Green New Deal uh, uh, generated uh, uh, electricity or energy should be redefined. The Goldman Sachs or the Mercury or the large global giants should be, uh, shouldn't be uh, should uh, be allowed to have the ownership of uh, the outcomes of uh, this Green New Deal uh, policies. Rather, we need to encourage the general public or the individuals uh, to participate in in this Green New Deal policy it generated uh, new businesses and to take ownership of, of the outcomes. Uh, in this context, uh, I can suggest the three key uh, directions. Uh, there have been um, diverse uh, the procedures uh, that operated in other markets, uh, for example. In offline uh, the area, there are small and micro scale construction projects going on, including electricity project and the small construction project. Uh, but I believe that uh, such kind of offline small uh, the project should be transformed into kind of small scale uh, online and the businesses uh, based on this smart grid uh, uh, market. We all know that Apple also engages itself into small scale B2C market. So I believe that uh, the, at the, the central government level and at at the local government level, uh, there should be certain policies to encourage the active participation of the general public and the individuals in this new business model-based businesses. 
and also the general public can participate in this new uh, form of uh, the energy market if there are certain incomes uh, that they can uh, get from uh, their participation. For example, if the 4% of uh, the energy market is left to uh, the general public uh, for uh, free participation, then actually this kind of large scale energy project can be implemented in a more efficient and people participating way. And collective wisdom and the collective intelligence can be utilized based on this platform uh, based economy. And such kind of trials is uh, very important uh, to make. Um, as for uh, the perspective of, of the Gyeonggi province or local government, uh, when uh, these local governments deal with the Green New Deal, they need to make a paradigm shift so they can actually uh, stick to the existing or the conventional ways of policy implementation by 70%. However, the remaining 30% should be left to a innovative trials or uh, the general public's participation and also 5 to 10% of the this public project should be left to uh, kind of a private uh, platform sector. And this can open a wide uh, window of opportunity to the general public and the innovators. Uh, there are a lot of challenges made by the businesses, and I believe uh, that uh, some business can make a huge difference and can be a game changer in the market. Thank you. The Yes, we've just heard from Hamir Han about that energy transition. That was uh, what I was going to ask, actually, uh, to Mr. Lee Chang Su, because you mentioned that the future energy transition, your big picture of that, is very similar to what has already been said. Kyung Gi Do wants to have a more participation of a civil society, and I think it has a potential and a governance system in place. It has really worked very hard to try to enhance the citizen engagement. But uh, going forward for Green New Deal, I think that is going to be a very important asset. You just, uh, we've just heard from Hong Yipyo. And I think that that has uh, led to a lot of a contribution to profit generation. If you have any uh, proposals to ask about that on um, something that you would like to strengthen in terms of civic participation. Yes, thank you very much. I've been engaged in environmental activism for about 25 years. And this uh, climate crisis that we're talking about, I think, for about the last 22 years, I've been uh, working on that issue in particular. IPCC has talked about human extinction, that we only have about less than 10 years to respond to this. So I am very anxious and depressed about that, I have to say. Many countries have uh, announced uh, states of emergencies and tried to uh, revamp their legislative mechanisms. But recently, the National Assembly has also passed a resolution, and the president has also said that they're going to go net zero by 2050. Many local governments have also declared states of emergency, so I thought that that's great because many people are finally uh, understanding that this is a very urgent matter. However, the implementation plans, if you look at the very specific measures, the action plans, I don't know if that's enough, to be honest with you. This energy vision, I've gone to the uh, task force, the meetings by the government, and with the Gyeonggi-do government's plan, I think a little bit is uh, very positive because if you look at the plans themselves, you, they might not seem very extensive, but your Green New Deal tries to foster a lot of participation of the public and you try to want to uh, create a consensus among the public about the importance and urgency of the climate crisis. And I think that's very important. So one of them is that you want to try to create energy self-sufficient 100,000 residences, 100,000 households, maybe many uh, PV plants. And you said that you're going to create about 100 uh, cooperatives just here in Gyeonggi-do. That's one of your goals. And I think that uh, 100, one cooperative can have about 1 million members, which means that a lot of different people can participate in uh, this framework. So I think that that is very important. It's very significant. When I was working with the cooperative activism, I 
every the government and many different people have talked about citizen engagement and acted as if they're going to work together with us, but we have to get support in the form of actual land, but we were not able to be given a lot of a public land because it was just very difficult. But we were able to get about a public land, about 100 mega, mega space megawatts of capacity. And this is a two-year plan. Within two years, if uh, the plans can be really implemented, many people of Gyeonggi-do participate there to understand better the renewable energy and climate crisis and really uh, receive a level of a dividend because people will be more interested if they can get a share of the profits. With that, maybe in year three, it won't be just 100,000 residences, but you know, hundreds of um, maybe 100 million or millions of uh, households will participate there. And that could be a very important transition point. So Gyeonggi-do's Green New Deal, I think the plan that was announced by Hong Hyun-pyo, hopefully I can, this can have a lot of a budget so it can be implemented. And I hope that there will be a lot of a public uh, commitment in that regard. So that is uh, something that I want to say. And another thing is that uh, Gyeonggi-do is in a very good advantage because if you look at the southern area of uh, Shi Hwa-ho, that complex area, it's really just an open space because it's very, the land has a lot of a uh, salt, so it cannot even be used as farmland. And there's also Hwasan area. So if uh, Gyeonggi and San Hwasan can all work together to make use of this uh, very much real estate that big companies, not led by big companies or public corporations, but led by local governments and citizens and cooperatives, I think that that would allow for Gyeonggi province to, to be a leader in this work. And a lot of other provinces and other local governments would also follow suit. to really facilitate more alike activity nationwide. Thank you very much. You just came up with a very positive feedback on the energy system transition of Gyeonggi province, particularly in the area of people's participation. And this is the area that the Gyeonggi provincial government should make more efforts. Now, uh, I'd like to ask the next question to Mr. Kim Egan. We all know that the energy policy has been pursued and developed by the central government solely. And that led to the situation where the local voices were not reflected on the energy policies of the nation. However, as we all mentioned before, there is a, a strong need for the close link and the cooperation between the local uh, autonomous governments and the central government. What do you think about that? Uh, we all know that Gyeonggi province actively pursues green new Deal policies, including uh, or in cooperation with Ansan City, Pyeongtaek City, and all those uh, small cities also engage themselves in their own green new Deal uh, policy implementation. And Mr. Hong uh, made a perfect presentation on the Green New Deal uh, policies of uh, the Gyeonggi province. I'd like to make a few suggestions with regard to uh, the Green New Deal policy implementation of uh, the provincial government. Um, it seems that there are seven um, major categories and 25 key tasks in terms of uh, the Gyeonggi province's Green New Deal. Uh, policy implementation. But from a bigger perspective, in order to make a successful energy transition, we need to think about the uh, energy consumption and the areas, uh, particularly buildings and also industries consume a huge amount of um, electricity. So as a part of Green New Deal implementation plan, I would like to ask uh, to give uh, more consideration of the energy consumption made in buildings. First of all, we need to think about how we can increase the energy efficiency of existing buildings. When we take a look at the Green New Deal policy of the central government, it's more of a Green New Deal uh, remodeling of the existing buildings. And as for the newly constructed buildings, uh, MOLED came up with uh, the subsidy 
plan for eco-friendly buildings. And uh, as a part of this subsidy, uh, the MOLED encourages uh, the eco-friendly construction of a building as well as creation of a small uh, park or the garden. And I believe that such kind of measures should be also included in Green New Deal policy implementation plans of Gyeonggi province. And as for the industry sector, we all know that Gyeonggi province has a large industrial complex. It has a national industrial complex as well as uh, the agro uh, and industrial uh, the complex. So as for uh, the installation of solar panel in uh, on, on the rooftop uh, of those buildings or the industrial complex uh, uh, facilities, uh, the Gyeonggi provincial government can provide some subsidies uh, to accelerate and encourage installation of PV panels uh, on, on the rooftops or on those areas. And also, uh, the Gyeonggi province can come up with more creative measures to encourage uh, the power generation of individual households, and it can raise awareness of the general public that they can actually create and generate uh, the electricity that they consume. And also, another uh, task ahead of us is to create a close link between uh, the central government and the local government in terms of implementation of energy transition. The Ministry of Industry and the Ministry of Agriculture and Fishery also uh, came up with uh, the ministry level uh, the measures to implement uh, eco-friendly energy uh, transition in the local uh, areas. I believe that there should be more, uh, th uh, there should be closer and the stronger uh, the link between and the local government policies and and the uh, central government policies. So as for the Green New Deal policy of Gyeonggi province, I believe uh, that uh, that Green New Deal policy can be linked to the relevant or similar Green New Deal policy of other local autonomous bodies. The local autonomous bodies here in Korea are not competing with one another. Rather, they need to cooperate with one another to have a better implementation of Green New Deal policies. And as for the success of Green New Deal policy, there should be general uh, consensus made on, on the needs for energy uh, transition. As I mentioned before, the people participating projects such as uh, energy cooperative uh, creation should be encouraged to a, a bigger uh, extent. Uh, there is some room to be desired in terms of establishment of public consensus on energy transition and the implementation of Green New Deal. And in this context, Gyeonggi Province should make more efforts for uh, public publicity efforts. It's in the energy transition policies of Gyeonggi Do Province, so we need to do more on uh, industry and buildings. And we also heard another panelist talk about more work to be done. In transportation, this means that a lot of the departments of Gyeonggi province are not working together under the same goal for the Green New Deal. So hopefully there needs to be stronger implementation mechanism towards that regard. Next, I'll be like to hear from uh, Baek Hyun Suk of Ansan. You are, Ansan is a very a leading a best practice case in energy transition, and I think that you've done a lot in that regard. So can you tell us a little bit about the different challenges that you've had or any issues that you want to share with us? Uh, I think that the Green New Deal can allow us to take a new step further. Can you tell us some more about that? Thank you very much for introducing the achievement that Ansan City has made. Uh, I think that uh, the Green New Deal policies of Ansan City and in uh, pursuing the Green New Deal, we had uh, two things that I we went up against that I would like to explain to you. As you well know, uh, Ansan City has the world's largest uh, tidal power plant and in Daebudo, there is also LNG satellite complex and uh, PV complexes, wind power, many kinds of uh, renew renewable energy sources. It's a Daebudo energy town. 
And in terms of energy efficiency, there are a lot of products that we have developed. We also provide a lot of uh, energy consultant services. We've also opened this energy supermarket this year. We've also, last year, at the end of last year, we started a competition across our province, and we were selected as a, a pilot city uh, for hydrogen energy. And in May, those different uh, strong advantages that we have here at Ansan, we created a special zone in Tebudo uh, for industrial energy. In 2016, as the first of local governments in Korea, we announced Energy Vision 2030, and together with the civil society and energy organizations and energy companies and a public government, we came up with a goal to have a self-sufficiency uh, of one person or one household, one power plant, and lead up to a 30% uh, greenhouse, 30% uh, of a share in uh, energy generation coming from renewable energy. So this has led to a decrease of about 3.25 million tons of uh, greenhouse gases. For the last 10 years, we've been working very tirelessly towards this goal. And as Mr. Lee chang is also here, but this uh, Ansan Sunlight Cooperative is also something that we are really fostering. We also have a renewable energy tour for citizens and also be our training uh, lectures on uh, eco-friendly energy, different projects that we have in Ansan because we are a pilot test city for hydrogen energy and using the base that we have with the renewable energy, we are going to work on implementing Green New Deal. And I would like to share my presentation with you on creating a green eco city, a sustainable eco-friendly energy transition, a smart green industrial ecosystem. We have uh, seven different areas that we are focusing on. If you look closely at this, there is a, uh, we have ecosystem and creates a national garden, a shiwao and also do a remote automatic inspection system for waterworks and a renewable infrastructure establishment for our groundwater facilities, make use of the tidal power plant to do water electrolysis to produce green hydrogen as the first in the metropolitan region to make use of our pipelines to supply a hydrogen to residential areas. In Tebudo, the uh, distributed grid is also some another part of our project, an intelligent smart grid uh, project. We, there is also a small island close to Tebudo called Pungdo, and Pungdo is going to be turned into an energy self-sufficient uh, energy town. Uh, we're going to continue to build on this base where we can propagate more renewable energy. Also with EVs and HCEVs, we're trying to uh, deploy more green mobility and also come up with a new R&D complex to focus on uh, green energy. In promoting this Green New Deal, one of the uh, difficulties is that we need to get um, enough land to do this, uh, budget. In the case of our city, for about 10 years or so, we have used uh, public buildings or lots that are not being used. So we've already installed a lot of uh, PV panels there. And we were in search of a uh, new land, which is why we've identified those areas around Shihuahu. There's a bicycle route there. And on the bicycle route, we have installed PV panels. When we install PV panels there, then we have to pay a fee for occupying the roads. And that was very expensive, which made it very not economical for us to pursue this project. So I think that the uh, road occupation fee has to be lowered a little more. That is something that I would like to propose. And another thing is that for the Green New Deal, 
the local governments get a little bit of the uh, budget. Uh, the budget is divided up uh, among the local governments. But maybe you should look at the uh, local government's commitments, the political commitments. Or if you feel that some local governments uh, should be given more uh, funding because they have very uh, key projects in the pipeline, that that would be very helpful. Uh, for us, the Tebudo has a very strong uh, energy self-sufficiency project. So maybe we can see more investment there. And so for distributed grid or energy self-sufficient towns, that they can be listed as a best practice case for the nation. And this means that the policies will not just be rhetoric, but that they can be seen as something that's more substantial. Because we're doing this as a country first, uh, nations first. We can also tie that in with a tourism, uh, ecotourism, and make more uh, economic vitality. And that is something that we would like to promote. Thank you. 네, 안산시는 특별히 시간을 많이 I gave more time to uh, Ansan City because Ansan City's Green New Deal policy is worth uh, being uh, publicized. So uh, the, uh, the local autonomous bodies such as Ansan City, which has great expertise in um, the Green New Deal policy implementation, should be publicized. And also, there should be strategic alliance uh, made between these uh, the, uh, small uh, sub-level uh, cities and, and the Gangi Provincial Government. Gangi Province declared the Energy Vision 2030, and it uh, established the Energy Center. And actually, uh, this Energy Center has been the benchmark target for other local autonomous bodies and also uh, some other local uh, autonomous bodies studied uh, uh, establishing the energy center like the Gyeonggi Energy Center. There must be a lot of difficulties you can expect if, um, ahead of the center, particularly in implementation of um, Green New De uh, Vision of Gyeonggi Province 2030. So what are those difficulties that you can uh, think of? Let me summarize uh, the position of uh, the Gyeonggi Energy Center. We all know that uh, Gyeonggi Province is number one in terms of um, energy consumption, and also it's number one in terms of greenhouse gas emission. However, its uh, energy self-sufficiency is not quite satisfactory. It means that it brings uh, the energy or the electricity from outside to consume um, inside of the Gyeonggi province. And also, the energy welfare level is quite uh, different and uh, among uh, different uh, the members of the Gyeonggi province. That is why uh, Gyeonggi province has a significant need for energy transition. As it was rightly pointed out by a Gyeonggi province uh, 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 government uh, official uh, presenter, Gyeonggi province needs to pursue uh, kind of key uh, tasks uh, in uh, actually, uh, I mean, in terms of 25 key tasks. So actually, Gyeonggi needs to focus on people participating energy transition, as well as the development of new energy businesses and the improvement of energy service and efficiencies. And Gyeonggi Energy Institute uh, actually conducted a lot of research projects to come up with effective ways to achieve these goals. We all know that Gyeonggi has 31 uh, the smallest cities and the counties, and all those 31 one uh, sub uh, cities and the counties come up with their own uh, plans for uh, self sufficient energy system. In this context, there should be a close network created between these 31 uh, cities and the counties and the Gyeonggi provincial uh, government. Each city or a county can identify a uh, uh, the energy transition related uh, project which is suitable uh, to its own circumstances and the conditions. And Gyeonggi gov government uh, can provide relevant support to those uh, small cities and the counties. Secondly, I'd like to make a kind of philosophical point. Energy transition should be pursued uh, from the perspective of social fairness. 
As it was pointed out in the previous presentations, the large capital uh, should be mobilized uh, for uh, energy transi uh, transition and also a large uh, budget uh, and the subsidies are provided to uh, uh, the energy transition projects and we should uh, be very careful uh, to take care of uh, those uh, who are isolated from this transition process. We need to establish a kind of an energy system which provides a fair and equitable right to energy to all or to everyone. This is a kind of point which can be ignored easily. However, this is a kind of the social value that we should pursue. So I just mentioned energy justice and equitable access to energy. And in order to achieve these goals, energy transition governance should be established, participated by both the public sector and the private sector. So all the conflicts which can uh, occur over the course of energy transition can be resolved through this governance system. So as I mentioned before, the People participating in 31 county participating energy transition governance system should be established for the ultimate success of this energy transition uh, project and initiative. The cooperative network uh, between the small counties and the Gangi provincial government as well as equitable uh, right to energy should be established and also the energy governance participated by both the private sector and the public sector should be established to achieve a genuine energy transition in Gangi province and the Gangi Energy Center will do its utmost to achieve that goal. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That was very important. In 2008-2008, we did green growth policy, and now we are pursuing the new, a green new deal. Some people might wonder, what's the difference between the two? I think that that uh, just transition is very important. You talked about uh, justice and fairness in terms of uh, combating climate change and doing energy transition. There's going to be some damages, and the damages might be different across different communities and groups and individuals. So we don't want uh, the inequality to be worse. We need to have a fair and just transition. That's a very important value of the Green New Deal. So in that regard, the Green New Deal is a strategy that can change around economic structure, but also lower inequality levels. So it's very valuable in that regard. I should be able to give more time to the panelists, but I th we are very much behind schedule, very much so. But because we have uh, listened to these uh, very important comments, I try to give as much time as possible. Maybe, uh, lastly, Hong Yong Pyo, you can uh, just briefly react to what you've heard. The panelists uh, have uh, participated. I would like to thank the panelists uh, for participating and uh, Kyunggi Energy Transition. You are very much interested in this and you've also provided a lot of advice. So thank you very much for that. We feel that this is an area that we have to really focus more on. The policies have already been put in place, but our efforts to try to uh, respond to climate change is something that we have to continue. And the policies also have to be newly implemented uh, for the right relevant time. So I would like to take all of the different uh, advice that you've said to us, and I will try to reflect that in the policy. Uh, we are not talking about climate crisis, not just climate change. And as been mentioned by the other experts, uh, the Green New Deal and energy transition is not a matter of a choice, it's a matter of necessity. So it's something that we absolutely have to do, but now it's an issue of the scale and scope and speed. Uh, President Moon Jae-in last week said that uh, he wants to go carbon neutral by 2050, and he emphasized that this has to do for uh, the future of uh, Korea and humanity, that we have to be proactive, not just uh, reactive to these changes, that we have to be really critical and uh, try to bring about these changes on our own. Uh, energy transition and uh, carbon neutral measures. I think that uh, Kyunggi government's uh, role in that regard is very important, and Kyunggi has a lot of uh, potential. So going forward, this Green New Deal 
uh, policies. Hopefully, it should be very uh, successful, and maybe through the governance of each of the different entities here that you can engage in cooperation and maybe get rid of the obstacles. That is the kind of approach that we need. And furthermore, the carbon neutral goal. Uh, there is no uh, mid to long term goal for Gyeonggi-do province, so maybe it's going to be helpful if you can come up with a mid to long term vision and come up with implementation measures for that and also try to enhance the different institutions and also have a public private level of a cooperation at federal and local level and within the uh, local governments to try to come up with the necessary governance to do so. I think there needs to be a lot of uh, discussions to make that. Uh, the panelists have done a lot to try to talk about the importance of the Green New Deal. You said that it's very important to foster a sort of consensus on that, on why we have to do this, and how it's important for us to try to make sure that everybody will benefit from this, and that is how we can get public acceptance for this policy. So I would like to thank all the organizers for organizing this forum and all the panelists who have come here despite their busy schedules. And with that, I would like to close the session. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Ms. Go for chairing this special, special session and also I'd like to extend my appreciation to all the panelists. Uh, it was last uh, session, but we had a very productive uh, panel discussion and this concludes the first Gyeonggi International Hydrogen Forum. This, I hope that today's forum will uh, lay a, a great foundation for uh, the transformation of Gyeonggi province into a leading uh, province in terms of hydrogen um, economy implementation. This concludes the second Gyeonggi International Hydrogen Forum. Thank you very much. See patient, and we hope to see all of you again at the next Gyeonggi Hydrogen Forum. Thank you.